What is up everybody? Chris and JD from Team Aquascape. We've got Jack P out here. We've got a couple CACs. We've got Chris, Z, and maybe at some point we'll get Juan out here, but what do we got going? We got a brand new project today. First one of the year, kind of wide open access for an awesome homeowner. Cool uh, little shelter here going on. Nice circular patio, deep stream. Should be awesome. The weather is absolutely oh my gosh. perfect. Might be a little hot, we'll see. Oh. <laughs> Get that SPF exactly. on. Well, we are going to make some incredible progress today. Like JD said, we have wide open access. So why don't we turn the camera around and show you what we're working with. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. All right, JD, so you are standing in the middle of roughly a 22 by 14 foot pond-ish, right? Kind of irregular shape. This is that shelter you were just talking about a second ago. Awesome, awesome. It looks like we're bringing the pond edge right up to little pergolog pavilion, called a pavilion. Bring that right up to the pavilion. Really cool shape. I think the skimmer box is gonna go over here, and then we've got a pond and then a considerable stream kind of coming over through there. Why don't we walk over there and talk to me? So we talked about deep stream over here, maybe Maybe splitting it up a little bit, but what's that right there? Coming across here after our split in the deep stream, we got a bridge coming to that circular patio. And then uh, up top, we're starting to get a uh, little biofalls right up here. A little bit of a trouble with drainage here, but we'll berm it out. It should be a sweet project overall. Nice, so biofalls there, dumping into what looks like about an eight by eight foot pool that'll butt right up to this, not really cut out, but the contour of the walkway. And then like JD said, there's a circular patio, probably for maybe a little dining table, but then a bridge coming off of it, leading you to what will be a pathway kind of meandering about leading you into the side of the pavilion over there but it's going to be awesome with the pond edge coming right up to the edge of the pavilion really cool shape i think where it almost feels like it wraps around on both sides so we've got the equipment out here we've got the rock already delivered it now it's time to start digging and uh, maybe 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 we can get two machines out here today and really make some slamming progress so ready let's make it rain <laughs> Guys, so big pond, small pond, all of them uh, essentially use the same components. Right now we're digging out a little base here for the biofalls. Gonna build up the berm around here. I'm plugging up one of the back holes just cause we're gonna have one pump doing the circulation jets and then one pump coming right back up to the biofalls here. So uh, we'll get that going for you guys. progress so far. We've got the entire pond and the entire stream excavated all the way back to our upper pool coming out of the 6,000 biofalls back there. So what we're doing now is getting our protective underlayment in and then we are going to go ahead and get our pond liner in and then start slamming boulders in this afternoon which is way further along than I thought we were going to get today. I got to be honest so I'm very pleasantly surprised with what's happening today. So everybody's doing a great job. We were, it was nice because access as you can see is wide open back behind me. Really really helps with the efficiency of things. As you guys know, we talk about it in a lot of the episodes, but it just really helps to be able to get that machine where we need it to be. And we just kind of basically dug our way out of here and then ended up able to bring that machine back over to where we could start setting rocks all along this area and through here. So we'll get as far as we can today. And we're gonna have to seam the streamliner to the pond liner tomorrow because we're gonna take that area right back behind Chris. And that's going to be our deep stream over and through there. So that will all be underwater and we won't be able to pull off a successful overlap. So. That's what we're gonna do, is seam the two pieces together. We've got, let's see what we got over here for liner size, shall we, boys and girls? You get to 25, what do we got here? This is our, okay, so that's our streamliner, 15 by 50. And then if you wanted to see how our all of our stuff comes shipped to us, they get shipped to us in wheelbarrows, as you can see. And over here, we have a 25 by 30. This is our pond liner. So we're gonna get this liner in as soon as we get all the geotextile down. That will line this portion of the pond up to about this point here. And then we will seam our two liners together and that'll be our 15 by 50 running this way. It's about a 30 foot stream, but we always add extra length and width just in case we wanna do any manipulation of the stream and really help change the shape. So just to give you guys a heads up, that's what we're doing. Start of 
of day two out here. We made incredible progress yesterday. We had to wait on a shipment of granite boulders and gravel in order to kind of keep going. We set about five or six, seven rocks yesterday all along the skimmer intake area over here. But our boulders, which are all these granite cobbles down through here, and then as well as our gravel. So we got a mix of three quarter here. And then we've got some of the inch to two inch stone as well that all got delivered today, which is going to help us keep rolling. Because as you've seen in videos of the past, we like to use that as backfill inside the liner for that stability when we're stacking rock here inside the pond. It prevents us from folding that liner back and forth, back and forth, really carving these boulders in. We just over excavate everything and then use that gravel as backfill inside the liner to create that foundation or that bed for the rocks above and behind it to sit on. I know that makes sense to most of you, but we're going to try and show you that, which is what Jack is doing right here. You see he's got a bed of gravel back behind here. He will continue to fill that and these cobbles that are right out in front are going to act as kind of the retaining wall to hold back all that gravel inside of the liner so that he can build up and then rest that rock on top of. The reason he brought it in, kind of dry fit it, is he really wanted to make sure that the elevation of that rock was appropriate to not only have the bottom of the rock right there underwater, but the above portion of the rock would be well above water so that we can maintain a really nice clean edge and nothing that will leak. So, and what he's doing is he's finishing off this curve inside and outside is really super important when paying attention to rocking in the edges of ponds and really maintaining not only the sheet water shape, that's all the water inside the pond, but also the exterior portion of the water feature and how those planting beds and everything kind of butt up to the backside of these rocks so everything doesn't look too straight. So you can see how he's got a great mixture of sizes, gravel, cobbles, everything in here, making a very solid wall. I love that avalanche look. Chris and Robert worked on this section over here, hiding lights, super, super important. And then we've got a kind of a kickstand boulder, which is really cool underneath this big flat slab that'll really change the shape of the pond. So we needed something straight up and down so that it didn't crush the pump fault in here, which we have a SLD two to 5,000 pump that will be feeding our jets. There's a large area around these pump faults where we did just cobbles in through here to act as a pre-filter to prevent any large debris from getting sucked up into it. But we also added some additional holes as well as cut out the backside of those slots, allowing for plenty of water infiltration. We didn't want to pack small gravel in here because that would eventually become impacted and disallow water from getting into the pump vault the way it needs to. I think that looks great. So you can kind of see what I was talking about where Jack has all the cobbles and everything underneath. What he's going to do is he's going to pull that strap out, really make sure that the rock is solid. And then what we're going to do is we're going to backfill soil all in through here as best we can. Maybe we'll do like a gravel soil pocket inside the liner here to allow for aquatic plants because water level is right about here, allowing us that four inches for that edge as we pull that liner back. Or we may just fold that liner back horizontally like this and come up the back. We'll see how much slack we actually have, but we'll have to get creative because we really want to see that soil come in and come along the back here. Looks awesome. Nice job, Jack. Thank you. back out here on this incredible moss rock and granite pond. You can see we've got liner propped up behind me. That only means one thing and one thing only, and it is seam time this morning. We are about a, we're a skeleton of a crew today because we've got another job going on. So it's just Chris, JD, and myself out here. We are going to be seaming a 15 by about 35, 40 foot piece of liner onto our existing pond liner, which was a 25 by 30. So before we started rocking too far this way and making it difficult for us to manipulate manipulate the pond liner to get it nice and taut and straight. We're gonna go ahead and we've got two eight foot two by 12s running straight across. We've got it vaulted underneath using some buckets, a toolbox, and a handful of other shims to get everything nice and level. But you see JD over here, let's go ahead and prep in the liner. We're gonna rinse it off, get it nice and clean, then get it dry. And then of course, you know the drill, we're gonna prime it, double side tape, attach the other liner, and then our six inch cover tape over the top of that. So before we get any other work done in the pond, we're gonna go ahead and seam these liners 
liners together and get cruising. So you can see the water that he's using is already evaporating because it's going to be a balmy 130 degrees today. Chris is excited, he wore jeans, I'm like the smart person that he is, but look how quickly that water is evaporating off of this hot liner. So yeah, so that's where we're at. We're gonna do this and then get rolling on rocking in the rest of this pond and working our way back into this deep stream. Thank God it's already excavated and we've got some perfect, perfect rocks to place in this deep stream to really make it look incredible. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll do a little split back in here and get something cool happening. So excited to see how it turns out, but first, seaming. The seam is done. Nice little 15 foot steam there. Now we're gonna start rocking in this corner, coming out to here. We'll hit this on our way out and then we're just gonna work our way upstream, as they say. So we're looking to make some good progress. We are now in the shade, which is great and uh, looking forward to it. So wish us luck. Another update from Sky. So we've got Zach taking a nap after lunch. We've got Juan over here, Chris. The three of them are working on getting this bridge element wrapped up. So we've got our cinder blocks underneath. We're gonna work on stabilizing everything. Really not a big deal. Zach's over here filling the cinder blocks with gravel, which is that structural wall stone that you've seen us use on a couple projects. This will be the entry to the rest of the garden space from this circular patio that is led by this walkway, taking you back to the house. This is their kitchen area over here, eat-in kitchen, really gorgeous outdoor space, which are always trying to capitalize on the view. So I'm gonna stand right where their viewing area is, and then bam, you've got the waterfalls kind of front and center into an upper pooling area up here. We have another, gosh, I don't know, 25 feet or so of stream and waterfalls to build, some grading, edge work, that kind of stuff. I wanna say we're in the home stretch, but I know we still have a significant amount of work left to do. We've got, you see some stuff happening over here. We are trenching for laying some concrete it for our electrician and in the same trench we are going to run our autofill line in a separate piece of conduit and run our quarter inch line from the hose spigot over there all the way over to our autofill which sits in the skimmer box back over there i love the whole direction of the stream we've got lots of big boulders we've got granite washes coming up in through here just a great mix of everything and i love the shape of it i can't wait till we fill this thing up and you guys really get to see the sheet water and what the pond itself looks like the footprint I know it looks like a bunch of rock. Granite, it's granite. Granted, it is granite and some gorgeous moss rock, but I just can't wait till we rinse it off, see all the full colors, and really that water in here will really give this thing that life that we're desperately seeking to get done. And it just looks incredible. I love how that piece of slate, that Chilton flagging, how it's cut in underneath the veneer, and then we're gonna mortar in that bottom section. We'll end up chipping out and giving this more of a rock-faced look in through here, and then mortaring that joint to mirror all this stuff so just a limestone mortar i love how these two large boulders kind of frame it out but this is that fish feeding area that goes all the way down you can see we've got a piece of one inch flex there's a number of circulation jets running from a two to five pump an sld two to five that's sitting in our pump vault located over here just in front of our skimmer box so everything is pulled in that direction so you've got the skimming action and you also have the bottom pull of the two to five pump that sits down in that pump vault which we will cover with granite and then there's a two inch t just out the back of that that. We have one line going this way to one circulation jet over here in this little cove so that we don't get any static area going on over here because this is one of those backwater areas just in front of the skimmer. So we put a piece in here. We're going to end up throwing a 45 on there shooting up towards the surface. We will not glue any of the 45s. That way we can really use those, twist them. We we'll rely on the compression of the fitting on top of the pipe or onto the pipe, but we'll, we'll really use those to twist and turn to really modify and fine tune the direction of that flow from those jets. We've got another one there, another one there, another one there and then another one down there as well. So really, really love it. Just look at this awesome, like craggy moss rock and granite. It just looks so freaking cool. Can't wait for you guys to see it. So the guys are buttoning up the last of the fine tuning and then we're gonna start rocking and rolling back into that stream. back 
As you can see, we have a pond behind me. We had a significant amount of rain over the weekend and it almost filled up the whole pond. We are already starting to drain that water out to the street. We're just getting here on a Monday morning after a weekend and this is what we got to. So yeah, we know the pond holds water. So that's always a good thing. So we're gonna get this thing drained down and then we're gonna focus our efforts up in the stream area where we left off the other day. So follow along with us, will you? 